Notion is a great tool for productivity and project management, but I love Notion as a habit tracker. And in this video, we'll show you how to create your own habit tracker in Notion. We make these short videos to take you from Notion novice to pro. So if you like these, give this video a like and subscribe so other people can see it too. Well, if you've read Atomic Habits by James Clear, you know that taking care of the daily habits over time builds to great results. But it's easy to lose track of the habits you are working on. And before you know it, you've gone a week or a month or even a year without making the progress you set out to make. When you add a habit tracker to your daily life, you'll find that you are able to achieve more than you ever thought. So in this video, we'll show you how to set up a habit tracker in Notion, how to set the correct property types for it, how to filter it so it shows only relevant information, how to set up a template so you can add other information beyond your database, like a journal, and finally, adding calculations to it. Whew, that's a lot of stuff. So watch it all the way to the end. The first thing you do in creating your habit tracker is to decide what habits or what types of things you wanna track over time. The best way to do this is to create a page, call it Habit Tracker, and then start listing out the things that you wanna track. Like I wanna build a reading habit, so I'll put read 10 pages every day. I wanna have a moment to relax, so I'll add sit in silence for five minutes. Write morning pages every day, get to inbox zero or task list zero. Maybe there are items that may not be daily, but are at least weekly. Work out three times a week. Meal plan on Sunday for the following week. And also, maybe there are data points you want to track over time, like weight or blood pressure. So now you have a list of habits you want to track, and it's time to put our habit tracker in place. Now it's a simple process. Let's tab down a couple of lines and add a database. So backslash and then scroll down to inline database. Now you'll wanna add columns for each of the habits or data points you want. Now, if this is just a yes, no flag, I did it or I didn't do it, you'll wanna use checkboxes. So things like reading, silence, inbox zero, et cetera, you're gonna check off whether it happened. So property type is checkbox and you just title the column appropriately. For something like weight, you'll wanna add a column with a property type of number. Blood pressure, although it is numbers, because of the format, you couldn't use 120 over 80 in a data field and have it be a number. You'd need that to be a text. Now, if you wanted to though, you could have two number columns, one for systolic, the first number, and one for diastolic, the second number in your blood pressure. Now you can add data here in this database two ways. One is just to add it to the data fields on the table. And then the second is to click open in the name field, and that will bring up a page with properties at the top. Now, this is useful if you also want to capture things like big lessons learned from the day or top successes or a big priority for tomorrow or a journal. If this is something you want to do, the best way to handle that is to create a template. Let me show you how. Over where it says new, click on the down arrow and then click on new template. You'll see a new page with your properties and you can realign and reorder the properties how you would like and it doesn't affect the order on your table. But down here, you can add additional prompts or questions or data. For example, I'm going to add three big, big successes, one lesson learned, one big task for tomorrow. Now I'll click off this and I've saved a template automatically. Now when I wanna add info for the day, I can open the template and get started just by going over to the new and then selecting this template. Finally, this will create line after line after line on this table, day after day. Now, one thing you may want to do is to filter this database so that it only shows the most recent month or perhaps even the most recent week. So go into filter and then you can set uh, that the date needs to be in the last month or whatever it is that you would like to do. Now, all the old ones that don't fit that filter definition will no longer be visible. The data will all still be here. So if you want to remove the filter, all of it would show back up again. And finally, for items in your database that are numbers, like weight, you can add an average at the bottom so you have an idea of your weight over that time period that you've set for your visible table. So now you have your habit tracker. I suggest that you set it as a favorite by clicking all the way up here on the top right, and then that will make it easy for you to find, whether you're on your laptop or on your phone. So there you have it. If you have any questions about this habit tracker or a habit tracker that you are creating, drop a comment below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.